Welcome back to Scope. I've just been decorating the lab with a few balloons. <laughs> uh, why? Well, two reasons, actually. They look good. Uh, OK, three reasons. They look good. They, uh, they're round, which is the theme for today's episode. <laughs> and they directly relate to this next story. Except they take their balloons to extremes. Try that again. There's something round we're all very familiar with, but usually we can't even tell how round it is. Earth. And today I'm going to launch this round balloon into the atmosphere to get a better look at our round planet. Hi, I'm Terry. Come with me and I'll show you what we're up to. Today we're going to attach a camera to the balloon so that we can capture some more images and video of the planet. There's a lot of preparation to do leading up to launch. We download wind and weather data so that we can run a flight prediction. This will help us pick the best day to fly and then plan our day. We also need to pick a launch site that is large and open, far away from airports and has an indoor area to prepare in. Now that the big day's here, it's time to set up all our equipment and make sure that it's working. First we set up our GPS receiver. This will track where the balloon travels. Then we add a radio transmitter so that we can send and receive signals to the balloon to check its exact location. And then it's on to the most important part of the whole setup, our giant balloon. We use balloons because they're an efficient, easy and safe way to get objects like cameras and experiment equipment to greater heights. To make our super stretchy latex balloons fly, we fill them with helium, which is lighter than the air around us, so it carries the balloon up and into the sky. We check how much helium is inside by using an upside down scale to weigh the balloon. Instead of measuring the force pulling down on the scale, this measures how much helium is pulling up. This measurement lets us run lift calculations, telling us how fast and how far the balloon will rise. At this stage, we attach our equipment, including a parachute to slow the descent, using a long, strong rope. Now the big moment's arrived, it's time to let the balloon go. Our cameras capture every moment of the flight. You can see that when the balloon reaches about 20 kilometres altitude, the curvature of the Earth starts to show up. As the balloon gets higher and higher, the air pressure gets lower and lower, causing the helium to expand and the balloon to stretch. As the balloon reaches about 30 kilometres altitude, it can be about 15 metres across. Eventually, the helium expands too much and the balloon bursts, plummeting back down towards the ground. All the while we've been tracking it, so we know exactly where it's going to land. The GPS transmitter has been sending information back to our computers, and this is displayed on a map that we can follow. We've also been checking in with the balloon via our radio, so we know how high it is. Our data is so accurate that we usually arrive at the landing site before the balloon does. Now that the balloon's back on the ground, we check our gear and get ready for the next launch. <laughs> 